Hello everyone, for first updates now, I'm Tyler Rolds and you're watching Behind the Bumpers. It's fun show we dive deeper into FRC robots, what makes them work. And today I'm here with team number 2539, Krypton Cougars coming out of Pennsylvania. 2539 dates back to the 2008 season, but the last few seasons, they've really started to emerge out of the first mid-Atlantic region, racking up a couple district finalist awards. And most recently in 2021, they were the Bromine Skills Challenge and Autonomous Mord winners. And just a few weeks ago, they were both the number one seed and winners at the Ramp Riot 1 and 2 events. So we're excited to talk about this team, what's been making them improve, and to help me with that, from 2539, I have Weaver, Vic, Bree, and Rena. And we'll be talking about all the improvements happening on this robot, what's going on in the community with this team, all here and more coming up on Behind the Bumpers. Your destination for first content, updates, and gaming. Welcome, Welcome to, to the fun. fun. We'd like to thank Stryker for their continued support of First Updates Now. Stryker's internship portal is now open and available. Discover internships and rotational programs located around the world, including their headquarters in Michigan, when you go to careers.stryker.com and click on Students and Graduates. Fun is gearing up for the 2022 season and is looking for advertising partners that would be a great fit for our fans and also make it possible to keep us creating great content. If you're interested in your company or brand reaching over 100,000 unique individuals who are actively engaged in FIRST for either recruitment, brand positioning, or product engagement, go to firstupdatesnow.com forward slash info or reach out to us at admin at firstupdatesnow.com for our advertising partnership deck. And let's get your brand started on First Updates Now. So Bree, we're going to start out with you talking about the uh, power cell journey. And uh, this robot has really been modified a lot uh, since you originally created it back uh, in the original Infinite Recharge. Uh, so take us through the intake. Talk to me about what's gone into it and really what modifications you made to have such great success in these last couple of events. Uh, so this year we have an over the bumper uh, intake. And the way that works is our ball comes up. Uh, this intake comes down and the ball goes up and into a gravity-fed uh, station that is then connected to the, uh, uh, just going up into the shooter. Uh, uh, some modifications we made, uh, we used to have a uh, through-the-bumper kind of uh, intake where we had like a split in the bumpers and we were having a lot of issues with jamming with that. So we decided to scrap that entirely and go with an over-the-bumper uh, intake. So what made you choose, like, you know, were you looking at, like, hey, we want to do something different? Uh, were you inspired by any, any other teams? Or uh, what kind of made that uh, in, initial push to say, hey, this is the route we want to go? Uh, mostly just having a lot of issues with jamming. We had That was a pretty prominent issue we had um, with a bunch of our ideas for intakes and other parts of the robot. So we decided to go something completely different than uh, a two cuts in the bumpers and going in that way. So we decided to go over the bumper. Well, Bree, thanks for talking to us about uh, the intake for it. And we're going to go over to Vic, who's going to be talking about uh, that ball journey, that what you call the ball track, and then uh, the color wheel uh, design as well, too. Talk to us about uh, what's going on with the rest of the power cell. Um, after we intake our balls with the intake, we have um, a belt system. So we have a tensioned Vex belt and... With this belt, we used to use a poly belt with our 2020 robot, but we moved to a VEX belt because it is less gripping on the ball, so it actually offered us less jams. We still do have poly belts that control when the balls enter the shooter. So we have the poly belt in the front, which then controls when the balls go into the shooter. We also off the same thing with the power... Um, with the poly belt, we also run the color wheel, which we just have a bag motor and a gearbox for our color wheel, which we also have the color sensor, but we did not end up using that in competitions. It was not as reliable as we would have hoped. So before we get uh, into the shooter, um, I, I want to ask you more about the how you help solve the jamming issue. So um, was switching away from the poly belt there, did that pretty much take care of everything, or did you make any mo other modifications for that? Moving away from the poly belt in like 2020 after the season, we made a second robot that involved a revolver, but we still were having some jamming issues. So after that, we moved to the Vex belt and that pretty much solved most of our 
jamming issues with the tension that we have it at. Can you talk to me a little bit about more about your shooter, uh, how that functions? Uh, it looks like, you know, obviously uh, you have a bit of a hood there. So talk to me more about kind of the different angles. What's all gone into that? For our shooter, we have a turreted and hooded shooter. So we can move it in many ways to get it right where we want it. We also use two Falcons with a three to two gear ratio um, going into the shooter and we have a dual flywheel. And so one of the things I know when we talked ahead of time is you said that the shooter was one of the, one of the probably only areas that wasn't changed that much in your robot. Were there any modifications made at all though? Uh, we did move away from the Neos and use Falcon 500 for the shooter. And then uh, the last thing I want to ask you about is on your flywheel itself. It looks like you got a couple heavy weights uh, along with that. Can you talk to me about like what that material is or do you know like how much it weighs or anything like that? Um, I believe it is steel and the one on the right is five pounds and the <laughs> one in the center is one pound. So you have six extra pounds. That's crazy in there. So looking at from like a, a shooting perspective there, obviously you're going to maintain speed a lot with that, right? Uh, how long does it take for that to kind of generate the fly up, the like shoot a power cell out? Um, so it can take, uh, it can definitely take longer. Um, so generally we will spin it up before we go to shoot um, on the way there. And then when we're going to shoot, it's already at the speed. Got it. That makes sense on there. Uh, you don't keep it going the entire match though, right? Like it kind of respeeds back up each time. Oh, no, yeah. We would uh, run into battery real fast if we did. Makes sense on that. Um, Weber, actually, I want to stick with you since uh, since you have the uh, microphone right now. Is there anything from the shooter in particular you want to talk about from, like, uh, using your limelight or any other programming that goes into that? Yeah. So, uh, as we have both a moving turret and a moving hood, the way that we've chosen to aim is we keep the RPM constant on the flywheel, and we move um, by moving the turret and uh, the hood angle. So because we have this limelight here and it's attached to the hood, the limelight is not in a static position, but it moves with the hood. So what we've done is we have a, uh, a set point where uh, it, we don't just set it to different angles. Um, what we have it do is we have it move up until it um, sees the target in the right spot. And then we also have it move this turret angle until the target is in the correct spot as well. And those are both happening as we're moving around so that we can track it even if we're moving. Anything else from uh, where the power cell is? Any other sensors you want to talk about from there? Um, so we do have um, we do have some sensors uh, on the inside of there that we can, uh, on the inside of the uh, shooting area, inside of here. Uh, and we can use uh, I believe there's one in there that we use to detect if the balls are um, ready to be shot yet, and we can use those. Very cool. Well, we'll come back to you for other uh, programming uh, stuff as well. We're going to go back to Bree for a moment to talk more about uh, the climber and then uh, a little bit about the drive base. This is the first time your team has used a SWIR before, so we'd love to hear about your experience that way. But let's start out with the climber, Bree. Uh, so our climber is a pretty simple design. Uh, we have a 2x2 two two, uh, aluminum tubing that has a piece of 8020 in it. And the 8020 is connected to a gear that is run by a Falcon uh, 500 uh, connected to a 64 to 1 gearbox. So as the gear turns, it pulls up the 8020 and the 8020 is a hook. And that's how we climb. And a really interesting uh, thing we have here is our locking mechanism. Really simple. Uh, down here, we have a little uh, key that is held out of the uh, climber by a little plastic piece. So when the climber goes up, it pulls the string up and the lock goes in. And when the robot, uh, the climber comes all the way down and the robot is completely off the ground, it locks in place in a notch in the 8020. And that way we won't move at all when we're on the uh, bar. Um, something I want to ask you about is packaging for a robot. So looking at, at your climber, it looks like pretty well centered, that sort of thing. When you were looking mm -hmm. at designing your robot in general, like where does the climber fall into the hierarchy of how that's packaged inside the robot? Um, our climber is actually the last thing to be put on the robot. Uh, we had a hard time figuring out how we wanted to go about doing our climber because originally we wanted to be a um, trench bot. 
So we wanted to be lower, but we really weren't having reliability with our original trench uh, climber. So we decided just to not be a trench bot and go with the tall climber. And it actually worked out really well because we had an open spot right in the middle. I mean, you won. You just won two events, so I would agree with you. I think it's been working out pretty well, uh, for yeah. sure. Awesome. Well, let's go uh, into your uh, swerve drive and talk to me about. Uh, you know, we've seen lots of swerves, obviously, but what I'd love to hear about is just what has worked for you, what hasn't, what have you learned over this process, and maybe other teams who haven't done swerve before could learn from. So yeah, this is our first year doing swerve, and these are pre-manufactured uh, swerve uh, modules. We use the SDS Mark Threes. Um, and they've been working really well for us. Uh, they're both drive and turning motors are Falcon, uh, 500. And, um, we have, uh, encoders that are all on each module and something we kind of tried to incorporate into our modules is an easy switch kind of like things. So, uh, all of the connection wires are right where the module is. So if we were need to switch out a module, we can easily connect, disconnect all of our wires and switch out for a new module in case one were to break. What is something you're like, hey, I wish I would have known this before we started it. That would have been a big help. Probably how much we have to replace treads. Sure. We probably replace treads like once every like three weeks or right after a competition. If when we did Ramp Riot, we replaced our treads uh, in between the two days. And that's probably something I think we wish we would have known about before. Uh, so we're, let's head back over to, uh, Weaver, uh, Weaver. I'm not sure if there's anything else from a code perspective you want to talk about either from your sword drive or, or anything else. And then, uh, we're going to be bringing in Rena to talk more about your community outreach and your team. Oh, sure. So I just wanted to talk about the swerve drive and a couple of the autos that we've been doing this year. So with the swerve drive, we've gone through a, a couple of revisions, uh, with the code. At first, we wrote all of the code based on um, math that we'd seen for um, driving Swerve Drive, um, and that worked very well. It uh, it was a critical part of the uh, at-home challenge, uh, and now we're working on making it so that it uses the standard WPI lib code for Swerve Drive so that we can make it work uh, and integrate better with trajectory following. And then I can also talk about some of the autos that we used. So at the uh, at Ramp Riot on day one and two, we had a uh, six ball trench auto where we shoot three balls, move back, pick up three, and then shoot those. And then we also had a uh, five ball steal on the opponent's trench. And those were both very successful throughout the day. And it allowed us to uh, work well with the other robots that were on our alliances. Are you using any specific programs for like uh, for your autonomous itself? We do have like a fully automated shooting system with sure. the limelight, um, but we're working on making it so that we can follow trajectories, um, perhaps with Pathweaver or just creating our own custom ones and using those to make more complex and faster autos. Awesome. Well, thanks a lot. We were going to wrap up with uh, Rena. It's going to be talking about uh, some of your community outreach, uh, talking about uh, really what's uh, I'd love to hear, too. Uh, what's what do you think has kind of been the key factor to your team uh, really starting to kind of leap forward the last uh, even the season alone? Uh, but then let us also know what, what your team's got going on the next month before Rapid React comes out. Yeah, so our team, we are constantly working. Um, we're always reflecting as well. We have a lot of meetings about, OK, what do we want to improve on with our robot? What can we do better? What do we want to see in the upcoming years? Another thing is ambition. Like a lot of projects are very hard and it takes a lot of work. Like, for example, doing Swerve this year, but we decide we want to do this and whatever we put our minds to, we can get done. We were successful in doing Swerve. We came up with a hopper and intake system that was really successful this year. And anything that we put our minds to, we've been able to achieve. Um, when it comes to what's coming up in the next month or so, getting ready for the season, we are thinking about what comes next and what our team needs to do to prepare for the upcoming season. One of those things being students and recruitment. We are going to a Boy Scout event uh, November 29th to recruit some students there. And we're also going to be more active with our high school, being a community team, getting more students involved there, having more contact with the school and just getting a little bit more interest for the team. We also have fundraisers coming up. We're doing a laser tag event. Um, 
And we're also working with the Palmyra Theater to try and help them with some components to their musical that they're doing in the spring. Oh, talking about this musical, like how does how does your team as a Robox team incorporate into something like that? Yeah, so the Palmyra High School is doing SpongeBob the Musical, and they reached out to us and asked if we could help them design the Gary the Snail to drive around the stage. Huh, so awesome. we'll be, yeah, it's really cool. So we'll be helping them with trying to make something robotic that they control around the stage so that Gary can be live in the musical. Well, definitely looking forward to seeing that. Uh, make sure you shoot some pictures our way so we can check that out. That's really cool. Well, uh, once again, uh, 2539 Krypton Cougars coming out of Pennsylvania. Thank you so much for taking time to tell us about your team, uh, your robot, what you got going on in the community as well, too. It's really cool to see uh, this team start to really uh, grow in the uh, mid-Atlantic region and can't wait to see uh, future success. Good luck in Rapid React, and thanks for taking the time. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Thanks. We'd like to thank Stryker for their continued support of First Updates Now. Stryker's internship portal is now open and available. Discover internships and rotational programs located around the world, including their headquarters in Michigan, when you go to careers.stryker.com and click on students and graduates. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell to stay up to date on our new videos. Keep the conversation going and provide your input to our content. Watch our live shows at twitch.tv forward slash first updates now. Join our Discord at discord.gg forward slash first updates now. And check out Fun FTC on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And First Updates Now on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter.